This game was not on my bingo card. This was Notre Dame's Appalachian State. Whether you want to think of the Michigan loss when Appalachian State really put themselves on the map, or you could think of 2022 when they went into Kyle Field and beat Texas A&M. I have so much to talk about with this game. This game, I didn't even watch all the way through. I watched the very end, um, and I went and rewatched the beginning to just kind of see where everything began to crumble. I'm so happy for Northern Illinois. Let's talk about the winner first. If you have not taken the time or if you've not been on social media, find the video of Northern Illinois' head coach talking after the game. Enough said. I would love to hear your reaction from it, but that definitely, you know, tugged at the heartstrings. It, I love that passion about the sport. It's why I love college football. That presser right there is why I love college football. In Northern Illinois, God bless you. Because I listen, and then this is so weird and random, but I love Northern Illinois for a long time. I'm I was a huge Jordan Lynch fan. I don't know why. I remember like even on podcasts when I started doing uh content creation, I called him one of the most electric players in college football. I love Jordan Lynch. Therefore, I loved NIU. And I've always kind of like, you know, supported from a distance. I have no connections to this school. I even started a dynasty with them on College Football 25 just because I loved Jordan Lynch growing up in 2013. I, I thought it was so cool that there was a quarterback that rushed for like 2,000 yards. This is like a top 50 rusher of all time in college football at the quarterback position. And Northern Illinois had never been a top 10 team. Never. In their history, they had never done it. I think it's 0-14 at the time. They go into South Bend and beat Notre Dame, the number five team in the nation. They were favored by 30 and a half points. Let's talk about the flip side because we can talk about Northern Illinois all day. This is bad. Can't remember a time where we've seen a head coach go from a marquee win, a milestone win, going into Kyle Field and beating Texas A&M. Whether, what, whatever your thoughts might be on Texas A&M, uh, they call you call them eight and four Texas in mid. I don't, I do not care. You could be objective in the fact that they were a tough place to play. And it was a tough game. It was a grueling slug fest between two really good defenses. And you come out and you're hoping maybe the offense can look a little bit more electric than it did last week. And I had my reservations about Notre Dame on the offensive side of the ball. I didn't think Riley Leonard was a big needle mover compared to Sam Hartman. You have the experience of Sam Hartman passing the ball, but you get the mobility for Riley Leonard. It's a give and take. I thought Jeremiah Love was going to be electric. Uh, I thought Bo Collins and the wide receiver room was going to be just good enough, but they were going to lean heavily on the defense because the defense looked incredible and made Connor Wigman look like an undraftable player, not even like an undrafted free agent, undraftable. And... Connor looked really good this week. And, and trust me, as a Texas A&M fan, like a lot of people kind of, you know, do the correlation of Texas A&M and pointing and laughing at them. They just lost to the team that lost to NIU. I mean, I'm happy for NIU. I'm not going to be cynical and sit here and go, oh man, we, we could have done this. The A&M loss to Notre Dame sucks. And Connor Wigman, if he just played 20% of what his normal is, they probably win that game. But he played his worst game of his career. There's nothing you can do about that, but move forward as a team. I, I genuinely, if anyone tries to troll me about the whole Notre Dame loss, I know it sucks. They should have won that game. They were in the perfect environment and position to win that game. I also blame Ted Cruz, but that's for another point. You can't lose this game if you're Marcus Freeman. You give the pass to the loss to Marshall at home, but now this is two egregiously bad losses. Really bad especially knowing that Notre Dame does not have a conference. Therefore, they do not have a conference championship. Therefore, they do not have an automatic bid. Therefore, they have to be based off of their resume. And when you have as light of a schedule as Notre Dame has, this is a, a baseball bat to the knees. Because now the discussion begins, hey, if they just went 10 and 2, for the rest of the year, say Florida State was up to sub and USC and they lost those two, but they beat Texas A&M at home. That would get them into the college football playoff. This was a baseball bat to the knees. Riley Leonard wasn't good enough. This team was not good enough. 
Notre Dame, this is a bad loss. I don't have a, like a, a major takeaway outside of the fact that this is just egregiously bad. There's no paper popping stat outside of just you didn't do enough and you just came out flat. Like that, these types of losses, when you came out so focused and you were agile and you were one of the most polished teams, even with some of the flags against Sex AM in that environment, and you come out on the next week, just seven days ago, like this, that is how you go from the marquee, monumental milestone win to concerned about your job security in one week. That's why college football is great. Notre Dame, man, it's a bad look. Now it's so interesting because now Notre Dame goes from, you know, or at least Texas A&M, let me flip it. Texas A&M hoping Notre Dame goes undefeated to make that loss look better to where now Notre Dame is wanting Texas A&M to look incredible. I love college football, man. The great win for Northern Illinois. Could not be happier for this program.